So, hi, this is Paul Sulnik from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, reporting for Rome Now from the Virtual Euler Congress 2021. I'm talking today uh, with Dr. Alan Sabotti uh, from the University Hospital of Udine, a consulted rheumatologist, about his poster uh, 0145, predictors of psoriatic arthritis development in psoriasis patients, a systematic literature review and meta-analysis. So welcome and thank you for taking the time to join in. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. So um, why do you see now the time has come to look at the progresses from psoriasis to psoriatic arthritis? Oh, skin and or nail involvement usually precede articular involvement in psoriatic disease. And accurate, accurate identification of predictors of PSA in psoriasis patient could help early PSA diagnosis through a dedicated follow-up in psoriasis patient at high risk for transition and a potential interception of PSA without extra costs. Since a psoriasis patient in transition could need a therapy that could work both for skin and joints. And so I think that these are the two main issues that we need to answer in the next time. Okay. Well, definitely ex exciting times uh, coming up for uh, psoriatic and psoriasis patients. So what are the, the key features that you were able to synthesize from the SLR? Oh, this uh, SLR is the first on this topic. And regarding skin and nail, uh, we identified that, that when expressed as units, PASI score showed a weak predicted value for the development of PSA. On the other hand, a predicted value clearly emerged when the class of, classes of severity were compared. Then, with regard to nail involvement, an increased risk of PSA development among uh, psoriasis patients in terms of cumulative incidence emerge only for nail pitting. Another issue very important is regarding musculoskeletal complaints. As for rheumatoid arthritis, also in psoriatic disease, the risk of PSA development in psoriasis patients with arthralgia was about two times greater than in subjects without arthralgia. And lastly, regarding imaging, Psoriasis patients with imaging detecting musculoskeletal inflammation or damage were almost four times more likely to develop PSA. This is the four important points that we could synthesize in our systematic literature review. Other potential predictors were obesity and family history of PSA. Okay, well, this is uh, already quite, uh, quite a good overview. And there is also an overlap when you look at the parallel um, kind of engagements in the field of rheumatoid arthritis, uh, where ongoing initiatives over the last year also point out on ultrasound findings. Uh, and in, of course, in rheumatoid arthritis, the, the, it is a bit easier with defining populations concerning antibodies uh, in, in, in opposite to psoriatic arthritis patients. But how would you say, what, what, what are the next steps to, to, to fine tune this, to better um, stratify risk assessment? A good question. Uh, I think that this systematic literary review brings us uh, two important key messages. The first uh, is that we have uh, long-term predictors of PSA development in PSO patients, like severity of skin psoriasis and nail pitting, but we have also short-term predictors of PSA development in PSO patients like arthralgia and uh, subclinical inflammation detected by imaging that could be very useful to uh, try to uh, plan um, study for interception of PSA development in PSO patients. 
On this scenario, the upcoming Euler task force on the Euler points to consider for the definition of clinical and imaging features suspicious for progression to psoriatic arthritis, you will, you will surely help the design of longitudinal studies or PSA interception studies. I think that we need more evidence, more longitudinal studies on this topic to improve our practice for prevention and interception of PSA in PSO patients. That sounds terrific. So um, thank you very much for taking the time in this busy period of the EULA week. Um, I'm looking forward to what is coming up. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. And thank you very much uh, to all of you uh, for listening and, and watching this short interview uh, with Dr. Alan Sabotti.